Where do you think Tony Khan ranks on the list of money marks in the past? Like there was obviously Dixie Carter. What was the guy from the uh, AWF? Paul Alperstein? Uh, yes, he's the, he paid a thousand people fifty dollars each in like nineteen. What was it? Ninety one, ninety two. Oh no, it was after that. It was like nineteen ninety five, probably. Okay, well, because uh, he wanted to get Tito Santana on the um, Super Bowl of wrestling. That's why I remember that. Okay, well, uh, did he? Yeah, you what? talked about it at the time. He called you did up. Did I? <laughs> and he said, okay. can we get our world champion Tito Santana on the show? And you said, it was nothing against Tito, but it was too close to the show. You had already advertised the whole show. You couldn't add another title match all of a sudden out of nowhere. You know what? You know what, son of a bitch? You remember things I don't. I've never thought of that since. But anyway, well, yeah, but he he paid a, a thousand people fifty dollars each to be the audience for his television taping, so it would look like he had a big professional organization and paid a bunch of <laughs> guys. Uh, what uh, Slaughter was involved and in Tito and anyway, nevertheless, um, Gordon Scazzari, you can add him to the list. Oh, good God! But but no, Gordon Scazzari. Spent a lot of money for a like a 21 year old kid, apparently in ill health and mentally and physically, who had just gotten an inheritance from his family. Tony Khan's in a whole nother world of Gordon Scazzari. I mean, but I saw Gordon Scazzari at that at that one taping in Massachusetts that me and Stan went to, and he paid me double because I was supposed to do color. But then I got there. I said, well, where's the announce position? They said, oh, we forgot to set one of those up. So we're just going to bring you back and have you do it later. Don't worry. I'll pay you again. <laughs> that never happened, by the way. <laughs> but he had a pack of checks in his hand with no checkbook and no register and no not recording them, just writing out checks to fucking guys when they would come in and say, oh, I'm, I was supposed to have this or I did this or you promised me this or my goddamn dry cleaning or whatever the fuck. And uh, it was it was insane, but still, no, he didn't spend as much money. And I think he ran two nights. Uh, he didn't spend as much money as Tony Khan is spending on one of his executive vice presidents. Well, you weren't around Alperstein, but you were around Dixie and you were around Gordon Scazzari. And we are certainly hearing a lot of things from people, even people in that company about Tony Khan. Is there a similar trait in terms of, I mean, I'm not saying you have to be aloof with the guys who work for you, but, you know, does Vince McMahon hang out with the wrestlers outside of the venue? Did Bill Watts hang well, out with the wrestlers? Should a yes, guy yes. running the company? Well, no, wait, 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 wait now. Vince McMahon, yes. Don't you remember there's a famous story, he dared the Hart Foundation to give him their finish in the fucking bar <laughs> back in the 80s. He, he grew out of it as he saw that, that instances like that were probably not good. And, and he, but he, Vince always still, and to this day wants to be viewed as if not one of the boys, actually one of the boys, one of the top guys, he wants to be in that fucking club. Right. But he has the ability to separate if a business from, you know, <laughs> not pleasure, but business from social and uh, uh, more than anybody else in the world. Probably. I mean, Vince would fire is, is he's like Donald Trump. He's like, uh, I've said a cultured, intelligent, more reasonably honest, Donald Trump. He would fire uh, uh, even a family member if he needed to. Uh, and then they still expect a president at Christmas. Cause well, it's just business pal, but he's also smart and he's also been around the business since he was very young. And he's also had pitfalls and uh, fucked up at times. And he is high in the ranking for the guy that killed the fucking wrestling business, but he's also high in the rankings for greatest promoter that ever fucking lived both at the same time. So, you know, and yes, he has his picadillos, but with Dixie, it was different. Dixie was different than Tony Khan. She, Dixie was just, I think, obviously wanted to be a star on some type of television program. She was still pitching the fucking Housewives of Nashville idea or whatever the fuck. She, you know, she <laughs> she would have makeup put on to go sit with the fans and hold the title belt in the impact zone. She didn't want to be in wrestling. She just wanted to be on television. So they were able to play to that in the closing waning years to increase the stretch that fucking business out a little bit. Um, but even, her problem was she didn't know anything about wrestling, 
so she believed the wrong people that were telling her things. Um, is and as such as her irrational support of shit stain, but she didn't meddle in creative past the point of meddling in who should be in charge of creative. But she, it wasn't like she was in any way or ever thought that she was going to write these storylines or come up, you know, blah, blah, past, past an idea. Well, you ought to push Hernandez as something or whatever the fuck. Well, I was talking more I'm, about socializing, actually. Well, but, well, but hold on. I'm afraid that Tony Khan is wholeheartedly on board with who knows what. I don't know whether he's on board with the good shit or the bad shit, but I have a feeling he's wholeheartedly on board with some of this shit because maybe some of this shit might not be happening. If he wasn't wholeheartedly on board with it, I don't know. Some of this shit is his shit. Well, that's the we don't know whose shit. See, when when you've got a booker for good or bad, at least you know whose shit it is. But when when there's when there's people in charge of various things, and you know, I don't know what the 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 office titles are. Maybe there is only one booker, but there's obviously multiple people in charge of this show because it's schizophrenic. Uh, but as far as socializing, I don't think I don't know that Dixie would have ever even gone so far as to go for giving somebody a stunner. I don't now. Now somebody will come up with footage of Dixie giving somebody a stunner, but I I don't fucking know. Well, eventually she became an on-air character. You're specifically talking about, I guess, before she was an on-air character. Well, yeah. Well, and they ain't got that far yet here. Because that is the 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 fucking last hail mary of uh when when guys that have milked somebody and this is it's been this way for the past fucking well since there's been television and even before that you know you you put your front man over in public and in newspapers and etc. When somebody finds an angel, as Burt Prentice would say, because he has those carny roots, then angel is an investor. When you find an angel to open up Pittsburgh, you found a money man to bankroll you run in the city of Pittsburgh. They've found an angel. Problem is the wrong people found the angel because they don't know what they're fucking doing and the angel shouldn't be expected to know. And the angel should be kept out of any wrestling business decisions as much as possible. Almost everybody knows that because elsewise you head down that fucking road to ruin even quicker. But when the, when the wrestling people don't know what they're doing and the angel starts turning around going, wait a minute, I'm losing a lot of money here. Maybe somebody that fucking Buck Robley met down at the track. I'm losing a lot of money here. The Elvis impersonator in New Orleans. Well, hey, you need to go on television and be my manager. We'll get some heat on you, and then we'll switch you baby face, and you'll give out fucking free tickets to the wrestling matches to the kids, and you'll be a big hero around town. It'll take all the heat off of you. You've gotten your fucking crooked businesses. So they put the angel on television, make the angel a star, and then the angel agrees to fucking give out some more wings. This is not new. But what if the angel has read The Observer for 20 years and thinks they know better than the average fan? Nick Goulas promoted wrestling for 40 years, and he still thought his son George should be a wrestler. There's always a blind spot. 